Shalom. Thank you, Albert, for that warm introduction. I'm not used to it coming from the UN. And actually, it is the lion's den. And it's so good to come here to see friends of Israel, our brothers and sisters, coming from a place where I heard so much uh, lies and slander against my beloved country. I want to thank my dear friend, uh, Michelle Bachman. Uh, as you mentioned, I came to Orlando and in Jerusalem. And we, we did great things, and God's will will do great things in the future. My dear friend, uh, Robert Ilatov, we served together uh, in the Knesset, and we're also neighbors uh, in Israel. Uh, Albert, should I introduce you? Everybody knows you here. But uh, as you mentioned, we, we traveled around the world promoting the idea of, of Jews and Christians fighting together for the same values. I want to acknowledge uh, my senior assistant, uh, Lily Miles. Can you stand up, Lily? So Lily is a great example of the great work between Christian and Jews. She's a devoted Christian working in my uh, office in the mission, and we work together as a team fighting evil, fighting the bad guy. Thank you very much, Lily, for everything you're doing. Uh, dear friends, you all know what happened on October 7. I don't need to repeat. We have seen the brutal attack by Hamas terrorists who invaded our homes, kidnapped our children, raped our sisters and mothers, and murdered babies in their beds. 101 innocent souls remain in captivity in Gaza, and we pray for them every day. They are suffering ongoing atrocities. These hostages, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, remain in the clutches of a terror organization that has only one aim, to destroy Israel and to spread chaos around the region. Yet, while we fight for the release of all of the hostages, for the security of our people, I cannot help but reflect on the larger battle we face. The October 7th attacks were not just an assault on Israel, they were an assault on the values of the free world. This is why I'm very excited to be here. And I can tell you a secret, Albert. I haven't participated in many events in the last few weeks because in the UN, there are this obsession with Israel. Every day this week, we're going to have something about Israel. We started today in the Security Council. We just finished the debate. Tomorrow, as you heard from the previous speaker, there will be a resolution presented in the General Assembly. Wednesday, they will vote about the resolution. Thursday, there will be another debate in the Security Council. So I'm spending my days and nights fighting back, but when I knew about this gathering, I felt it is important to come for a short visit to tell you that we thank you. We value what you are doing, and it's important to be here with you. The Christians and Jews, we must fight together. We must pray together. It is so essential, and I want to quote Psalm 34, verse 18, which reminds us, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. So we are not crushed, but we are. We are indeed brokenhearted. But I believe that together we can stand strong, united in the defense of our shared values. You know, I believe that once I will come to the UN, I will hear about the condemnation for the atrocities of October 7. But believe it or not, almost a year after, and I came to the UN and I found silence. Silence. Not even one condemnation in the Security Council. Not even one condemnation in the General Assembly. And you know, the UN was established after the Holocaust to prevent horrible crimes like we experienced. And yet, they are not capable of doing that. Every day they will pass resolutions against us, but not even once they will mention the hostages or will condemn Hamas. While the UN could not find its moral backbone, there were those who could, especially our Christian brothers and sisters who were there for us in our time of grief, offering their unconditional support. The UN, an institution created to uphold peace and human dignity, 
has become a platform for the forces who fight against those ideals. Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, a country that fights to protect its citizens from terrorism, is singled out and criticized more than any other nation on earth. You know, as Albert mentioned, this is my second term at, at the UN. I never dreamed that I would come back to the same place. But after October 7th, you know, it changed our lives and I, I decided to come back and fight for my country. So before I prepared my speech for tomorrow, I did my homework. Since I assumed office in the summer of 2015, do you know how many resolutions passed in the General Assembly condemning Israel? Any ideas? 155 resolutions condemning Israel in almost a decade. Do you know how many resolutions passed in the General Assembly condemning all the atrocities around the world combined? 88. So you understand the obsession, the sickness of this body. The bias against Israel at the UN is not just a political issue, it's a moral one. When an institution allows its platforms to be hijacked by hateful and oppressive regimes, it undermines the credibility of the entire international system. Moreover, it sends a dangerous message to those who seek to tear down the values of the modern world. Friends, what we are facing today goes far beyond the borders of Israel. The darkness that we confront is not just about terrorism or regional instability. It is about the assault on truth, justice, and freedom. The values that are at the very heart of the Judeo-Christian world. When the UN fails to stand with Israel, it is failing to stand with these values. When the world remains silent as innocent civilians are taken hostage by terrorists, it is not just Israel that suffers. This is a broader assault on the principles that have made the Western world a beacon of hope and progress. What happened on October 7th is not an isolated event. The same forces that seek to destroy Israel are working tirelessly to tear at the moral fabric of the West. They spread disinformation, pit communities against each other, and undermine the unity that has long held our societies together. We see it all over. In Europe, where anti-Semitism is on the rise once again, masked as political criticism, we see it here in the US, in the street of Manhattan. I saw Hamas flags glorifying a terrorist organization. We see students that have been recruited to serve the evil end of the Iranian regime in their mission to destroy Israel. We are fighting for the soul of the free world. In this struggle, Christian Jewish unity is not just an option, it is a necessity. Our shared values, our shared history, and our shared responsibility give us the strength to stand against the forces of darkness. We have seen time and time again that when Christians and Jews unite, we become an unstoppable force for good. We represent the best of what the world has to offer, justice, compassion, and an unwavering commitment to human dignity. But we cannot take this unity for granted. We must work on it and use it to confront the challenges of our time. We must mobilize our communities to speak out against the bias, against the lies, and the hatred that seek to undermine our shared values. We must educate the next generation about the importance of truth, justice, and unity, and we must pray. We must pray, pray for the strength to fight those monsters, to win. We pray that the forces of darkness do not prevail. We must support Israel's right to defend itself at every opportunity. We must call out anti-Semitism and extremism wherever it may arise and stand together as allies in the fight for justice and truth. We also, my dear friends, must make our voices heard, not just in the hall of the UN, believe me, I will do that, but in every community, 
in every church, in every synagogue, in every nation, every institution that claims to defend the values of the free world. We find ourselves in a critical moment in history. The darkness is rising, but we are not powerless. The brotherhood between Christians and Jews has the strength to push back against the forces that threaten to tear down our values. I'm optimistic. Despite the challenges, despite the threats, I believe that together we can stand against bias and division. Together we can defend the truth. Together we can ensure that our legacy of justice, freedom and dignity will endure. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your love for Israel. I want to thank you for your unconditional support of the people of Israel. No ifs, no buts, you stand with us and we don't take it for granted. We need that support today. Thank you and may we continue to stand united in purpose, in strength and in faith. May God bless Israel and may God bless the United States of America. God bless you all. Thank you very much.